governo angolano tem vindo a ajudar esforços no sentido de cumprir as agendas internacionais através de políticas internas visadas no Plano de Desenvolvimento Nacional 2018-2022 e no Plano Nacional de Desenvolvimento da Educação e do Carangola 2030. A primeira fase do processo de consultas nacionais permitiu a recolha de informações preliminares que indicam que houveram progressos no setor da educação. Todavia, a nível do ensino secundário, ainda são notórios grandes desafios para as meninas no que diz respeito ao acesso e à progressão escolar, sobretudo nas zonas mais recônditas do país, por conta dos fatores socioculturais que atuam como barreiras para o acesso e o sucesso escolar. Para além das jovens estudantes, as pessoas com deficiências e as transumantes são outros atores sociais que encontram vários desafios no que diz respeito à integração escolar, embora programas estejam em curso visando a sua solução. Relativamente à componente número 1, um, a pandemia afetou 8,7 milhões de estudantes angolanos, o que levou o governo a repensar e melhorar as estratégias no setor da educação, com a alocação de verbas para o melhoramento das infraestruturas das escolas, por via de programas como o Plano Integrado de Intervenção nos Municípios, PIN, a implementação do modelo de tele e radioaulas de conteúdos didáticos do ensino geral através dos órgãos de comunicação social públicos, a elaboração de um plano de recuperação das aprendizagens para os alunos do ensino primário e secundário, a formação contínua dos professores em tecnologias de informação e comunicação, a reorganização dos currículos e a criação de diferentes serviços de apoio, como exemplo, salas de informação, gabinetes de apoio psicopedagógico, entre outros. No que diz respeito à componente de identificação das principais transformações e alavancas estratégicas no reimaginar a educação para o século XXI e acelerar o progresso no sentido de objetivos educativos partilhados, torna-se importante fortalecer a relação escola-comunidade-família, introduzir nos currículos conteúdos relacionados com a sustentabilidade ambiental, a educação para a cidadania e o empreendedorismo, preparar os jovens com competências técnicas e com soft skills para a vida e introduzir processos como reconhecimento, validação e certificação de competências de jovens e adultos. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege for me to participate in the Ministerial Roundtable of the Transforming Education Pre-Summit. I would like to thank UNESCO and all our colleagues for holding this important and timely event. Given the importance of broadening the access to quality education for all, the Republic of Azerbaijan, within its national education policy, takes necessary steps to ensure it. Modern challenges underline the importance of gender balance and equal opportunities for girls and boys to the quality education. Percentages clearly demonstrate that we have achieved the requested balance so far. In the last academic year, the number of students studying at last grade in primary school was over 164,000 with 46% girls. At grade nine, 137,000 with girls percentage 46 and uh, at the final grade students was over 93,000 with 46% being girls. In the recent academic year, 51% of all 185,000 students studying at bachelor level and 50% of all almost 20,000 students studying at master level were girls. Proper educational infrastructure remains one of the top priorities for the government and for the last 15 years, the Azerbaijani government has rec reconstructed over 70% of the entire school infrastructure in the country. The Ministry takes necessary steps to ensure quality education for all at all levels, with special focus on early childhood education and school preparedness program. Preschool education program of the Ministry currently covers over 80% of all five-year-old kids, compared to only 24% in 2013. Moreover, starting from 2017, a pilot project on community-based preschool education program is going on with the assistance of Haidar Foundation and uh, UNICEF. 
the main goal of the project is to increase the involvement of three to four years old children in preschool education to expand school parents, school community relations. And currently we have over 16,000 children attending this project. In 2021, the Education Student Loan Fund was launched which allowed over 2,900 students to receive loans in the first semester of the 2021-22 academic year. This figure is expected to grow in this and following years, giving more students access to tertiary education. In order to ensure the access to education during the COVID-19 pandemic for students from low income and vulnerable groups, tuition fees of more than 20,000 students were covered by the state budget. The Ministry of Education uh, also continues implementing a number of state programs aimed at supporting the education abroad of the Azerbaijan youth. Madame la Directrice Générale de l'UNESCO, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres en charge de l'éducation, distingués représentants des organisations internationales et de la société civile, distingués participants, Mesdames et Messieurs, en prenant la parole ce jour, Devant cette auguste assemblée, je voudrais dire que lorsque le Cameroun accède à l'indépendance en 1960, le gage pour atteindre les ratios d'un niveau de développement qui satisfait les besoins humains et sociaux fondamentaux d'une part et d'autre part capable de transformer structurellement, qualitativement la société camerounaise est l'éducation. 62 ans plus tard, une question demeure, l'éducation a-t-elle atteint les objectifs qui lui étaient assignés Mieux, les objectifs d'apprentissage ont-ils été atteints On peut constater qu'au délai des progrès accomplis, beaucoup reste encore à faire pour le Cameroun. La réponse à toutes ces questions s'inscrit à l'intersection de deux modalités, L'une déclinée dans la stratégie 2030 pour la transformation structurelle dans la stratégie nationale de développement et les engagements internationaux pris, notamment ceux relatifs à l'ODD4 et les aspirations de l'agenda 2063, tous instruments qui articulent la vision de la, du président de la République, son excellence Monsieur Paul Biya à l'horizon 2035 de faire de, faire de notre pays un pays moderne, socialement avancé, avec l'éducation comme levier de cette transformation. L'ambition est de, trans, de bâtir un système éducatif inclusif, protégé, résilient, sûr et sain, en cohérence avec les défis de l'enseignement et d'apprentissage du moment et les priorités nationales, système à l'issue duquel tout jeune diplômé est socialement intégré, bilingue, compétent dans un domaine capital pour le développement de son pays. Ainsi, pour atteindre tous ces objectifs et de transformation de l'éducation, en prélude à la conférence de New York, le pays, après avoir fait de larges consultations, prend les engagements si après, à travers son gouvernement. 1. Faire des écoles camerounaises des cadres inclusifs, équitables, sûrs et sains et protecteurs. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to present a short contribution on behalf of the Czech Republic, which continues to put emphasis upon the sustainable development agenda in education and is currently in the process of transforming the education system. In October 2020, the new strategy for the education policy of the Czech Republic up to 2030 was adopted, focusing upon sustainable development competences, elimination of inequalities, access to quality education, support for teachers, digital literacy, and on ensuring stable funding. Prepared. With maximum openness and transparency, this strategic document is based upon a wide spectrum of innovative ideas. As the first step, guidelines for the education policy were created. Afterwards, there were public discussions, conferences and consultations that involved the widest range of education policy stakeholders possible. 
The purpose for these consultations was to ensure that both professionals and the public had the opportunity to actively influence the document. There were more than 1,000 direct participants at roundtables and conferences, academics, experts, school principals, teachers, school founders, as well as parents and youth, and more than 8,000 online views. This strategy, 2030 plus, will be implemented within three periods that will lead to the creation and development of an open education system which will respond to the ever-changing external environment and provide relevant educational content over a lifelong perspective. First implementation period is currently in progress and involves a public participation. The priority of our ministry is to introduce a revised curricula which would reflect the needs of the 21st century. As for the COVID-19 pandemics, the crisis has strongly affected the whole society, including the education sector and young people. This new and sudden situation required adequate methodological, technical, financial and personal support, which was provided by our ministry in various ways. So let me briefly present the main activities. During the year 2020, the budget for regional education was strengthened special funds for schools for the acquisition of ICT equipment for primary and secondary schools amounted to 1.3 billion Czech rounds. 75,000 computers for pupils and teachers were purchased. Our ministry also issued a methodological recommendation for distance learning for schools with a focus on mental health and a course called Safe a Cyber to explain risk in the cyberspace. Honorable education ministers, distinguished dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to address this STEAM gathering today and to be a part of the unique initiative spearheaded by the United Nations Secretary General, the Transforming Education Summit. I am happy to share that the Government of India launched its National Education Policy or NEP 2020 under the able leadership of our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji. Built on the foundational pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability and accountability, this policy is aligned with the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. You will be happy to know that all the five action tracks identified under the Transforming Education Summit, that is safe, inclusive, equitable school, learning and skill for life work and sustainable development, growth of teachers, digital learning, and financing education have also been identified as area of priority under India's National Education Policy or NEP 2020. Our new flagship program, the Samagraha Siksha Avyan, work to provide safe, inclusive, equitable schooling for all, ensuring universal access to high quality early childhood care and education by 2030 and ensuring universal acquisition of foundational literacy and numeracy are priority under this. The Samagraha Siksha scheme provide support to 2.2 million children with special needs from pre-primary classes to class 12. To reduce gender gap in school education, 4,980 residential school for girls called Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyalaya have been set up. 6,69,000 girls are enrolled in this school under Pradhan Mantri Poshan Shakti Nirman. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. 
On behalf of the Ministry of Education and Sports, Laopedia, it is my great pleasure and privilege to participate in this pre-summit of Transforming Education. I would like to ex express my sincere thanks to organizers for bringing us together. Our presence here today is a reflection of our collective commitment of education and recognition of the urgency to prioritize recovery from the pandemic and use this as an opportunity to transform education. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for Laopedia, the priority areas of action for learning, recovery, and transform education as follow. First, ensure all children and young people are in school and learning. We will work together with all education stakeholders, including parents, community leaders, and our development partner to encourage all children to return to school and support children who may be at risk of dropping out. Second, recognizing the important role of teacher, we will strengthen the capacity of teacher and digital pedagogies so they can effectively support online blended learning. We are so armed to enhance the skill of teacher to cope with any situation which may arise, contributing to the resilience of the education sector. Third, to keep school safe and conducive for learning. We will ensure educational institutions have hygiene facilities and follow hygiene practices and are provided with adequate teaching and learning materials, including digital devices. We will continue to promote the technical and vocational skills, soft skills, and STEM education at secondary school and universities. We will also promote the digital database system, AI data, and improve the monitoring system. Fourth, we will prioritize strengthen the management capacities of educational administrators at all level of the education system. Уважаемые друзья, приветствую вас в преддверии саммита ООН по трансформации образования. Сегодня у нас есть замечательный повод, чтобы не только обсудить будущее образования, но еще раз подтвердить нашу приверженность. Уважаемые друзья, приветствую вас в преддверии саммита ООН по трансформации образования. Сегодня у нас есть замечательный повод, чтобы не только обсудить будущее образования, но еще раз подтвердить нашу приверженность. أصحاب المعالي السيدات والسادة رغم كافة ظروف الحرب وانتشار وباء كوفيد 19 في المنطقة والعالم بقيت الجمهورية العربية السورية واحدة من أهم مصادر بناء وتوفير الموارد البشرية المؤهلة على مستوى الوطن العربي والعالم وهذا يعود بالتأكيد لاهتمام الدولة بشكل كبير بالتربية والتعليم وتطويرهما وفقا لمتطلبات العصر لقد قامت وزارة التربية منذ تلقي الدعوة للمشاركة في قمة التحول في التعليم إلى بدء مشاورات وطنية شاملة وتشكيل تسع لجان تخصصية لتقديم ورقة عمل نوعية حول التحول في التعليم في ظل الحروب والكوارث التعليم في جمهورية العربية السورية مثالا 
تضمنت هذه الدراسة أو هذه الورقة الخطوات التي عملت عليها المنظومة التربوية السورية بالتعاون مع المنظمات الدولية للتحول في التعليم من خلال تعزيز أنشطة المهارات الحياتية وتطوير التعليم الوجداني Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to have opportunity to share on some of my thoughts at the Transforming Education pre-submit today. I would like to thank UNESCO for organizing this meeting to provide an opportunity for member states to focus on how education should be transformed so that we can achieve SDG 4 targets. Earlier this month, Thailand was honored to host the regional conference where the 2022 Bangkok Statement was adopted. We believe that there are challenges that will impede our progress as traditional education systems are not relevant to the new normal and the 21st century and the skill need to be upgraded with the new way of learning needs to be implemented and adopted. Therefore, the 2022 Bangkok Statement reflects a shared commitment of uh, countries in the Asia and Pacific region to contribute to, to the achievement of SDG 4. And today, we will also discuss the learning this crisis and how to overcome the challenges and costs by adapting to the new normal and the way we manage and deliver teaching and learning in the post-COVID era. The work of the International Commission of Future of Education is commended in this respect and can be used as a guideline for transforming education. In the relevance of this, I agree that the proposed five thematics actions are relevant for member states and the guide direction for the global education transformation. Thailand has also put strong effort to expand inclusive learning opportunity to all, including the marginalized and the vulnerable groups. Uh, recognize the flexible learning pathways is vital to current situation. The Ministry of Education has designed customized classroom to meet the need of the specific groups of learners and respond to their specific learning ability. Moreover, we have worked with the fund for the student loans to provide wider educational opportunity to the learner until the master degree level. The loan is required to pay back with a very low interest and only when the student complete their education and could earn that income. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me first to convey the greetings of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates, to all the participants in this event. I would also like to extend my thanks to the United Nations and its organizations working in the field of education, especially the UNESCO, for this distinctive initiative of announcing the organization of the United Nations World Summit for Transforming Education. I take this opportunity to affirm the UAE's commitment to supporting the priorities, goals, and solidarity action for building effective partnerships with UNESCO and countries of the world for the sake of sustainable education. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the national vision, strategies, and policies of the UAE are fully aligned with the pillars and themes of the World Summit. Therefore, and in line with global efforts and procedures, national consultations were launched in the UAE with the participation of development partners at both the regional and the global level strategic partners from both government and local agencies, and as well as public associations and members of our society. The UAE has developed a comprehensive and long-term vision that seeks to invest in the country's youth, equip them with the skills and knowledge enabling them 
to respond to rapid changes and work to make the UAE the best country in the world by 2071. Education is a key pillar of this vision. So we are very keen on developing an educational system that complements the future directions. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, what we need today is more than just educational plans and programs. We need to be proactive and accelerate the cooperation and participatory work to find creative and innovative solutions that contribute in addressing the challenges which countries are facing in the field of education and work. We need to empower students and teachers by providing them with the capabilities that enhance their roles in teaching and learning process. Education is a guaranteed right for everyone. And from here, we hope that this event will serve as a supportive platform for all the global efforts to achieve this much important humanitarian goal. Thank you very much, and I wish you all a fruitful event. Excellencies, honorable ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for their meticulous planning for this important and meaningful event. I am honored to deliver my speech at the meeting today as a representative of the leader of Vietnam's Ministry of Education and Training. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has a huge impact on all aspects of social life in general and the, on the educational sector in particular. Despite limited resources, Ministry of Education and Training of Vietnam has successfully implemented effective policies on online teaching activities to ensure access and quality of education. During the difficult time of the pandemic, Vietnam used both online and television teaching formats to ensure the learning of all students. We always ensure equity and equality and access to education for all target groups as a part of our policy with a particular emphasis on disadvantaged groups. The COVID-19 pandemic has moved us into a difficult position, but it also provides an opportunity to reform our approach to future education. Vietnam has been intensively repairing and planning a new educational model in the post-COVID era. We consider digital transformation as a critical strategy for contributing to uh, educational innovation quality, improvement, and flexibility, and integration. Vietnam is also in the context of implementing a new general <coughs> education curriculum since last year. The apparent change is the shift from content-based curriculum to competency-based curriculum, from knowledge acquisition to how students can use knowledge to solve problems with the ultimate goal of developing 21st century skills for students. Vietnam has achieved a first success in transforming the current model of teacher training into the cell training program. The breakthrough of this new training program is the flexible combination between online and offline formats in order to provide consistent and quality training to all teachers. Vietnam expects to make fundamental changes in building a learning society by the year 2030, ensuring that everyone has access to open learning platforms and can participate in learning forms in a flexible manner. Another priority is given to higher education in the light of more autonomy and research-oriented model in order to meet the demand for high-quality human resources that meet regional and international standards. sector is mandated to provide access to inclusive, equitable, and quality education as dictated by the Zimbabwe National Development Strategy 1. Key areas of focus is therefore to ensure all children, young people, and adult learners have access to quality, inclusive education with improved learning outcomes, leaving no one and no place behind. 
This work is also guided by the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Sustainable Development Goals, especially goal number four. The current status of the education sector in Zimbabwe, uh, our schools going population from the ages of three to 18 years is 694,618 and only 4,642,023 are attending school and of these 2,316,967 are male whilst 2,325,056 are female. People lost valuable learning time due to COVID-19 since 2019. In 2021, the majority of people, which is 45.4%, uh, just absconded school. This is quite worrisome and a cause for concern for the country. Nationally, the proportion of primary and secondary school dropouts are 0.5% and 4.67% respectively. And in vocational training centers, only 2% for, for females and 0.36% for males. There are 1,018,980 orphans and vulnerable children in the country, of which 513,173 are females who need educational support. There is need for a regular update database on peoples and students with disabilities in their categories. Infrastructure in educational institutions is inadequate, not all inclusive, not disaster resilient. Schools destroyed by cyclones and floods are yet to be fully reconstructed. More modern educational institutions need to be established to increase the production of more skilled human capital for, for modernization and industrialization of Zimbabwe. Уважаемые друзья, приветствую вас в преддверии саммита ООН по трансформации образования. Сегодня у нас есть замечательный повод, чтобы не только обсудить будущее образования, но еще раз подтвердить нашу приверженность долгосрочным целям устойчивого развития в просвещении, в воспитании молодежи, в поддержке детства. Верность принципам, изложенных в ключевых документах ООН. Российская система образования – всегда была и остается нацеленной на общечеловеческие ценности. Мы воспитываем детей в духе справедливости, уважения к старшим, формируем бережное отношение к природе. Это наш неизменный ориентир и прочная основа для гармоничного развития личности. Вместе с тем, на каком бы крепком фундаменте не строилось образование, само общество. Современные проблемы ставят нас перед необходимостью меняться. Совсем недавно привычный у... بقيت الجمهورية العربية السورية واحدة من أهم مصادر بناء وتوفير الموارد البشرية المؤهلة على مستوى الوطن العربي والعالم وهذا يعود بالتأكيد لاهتمام الدولة بشكل كبير بالتربية والتعليم وتطويرهما وفقا لمتطلبات العصر لقد قامت وزارة التربية منذ تلقي الدعوة للمشاركة في قمة التحول في التعليم إلى بدء مشاورات وطنية شاملة وتشكيل تسع لجان تخصصية لتقديم ورقة عمل نوعية حول التحول في التعليم في ظل الحروب والكوارث التعليم في الجمهورية العربية السورية مثالا 
تضمنت هذه الدراسة أو هذه الورقة الخطوات التي عملت عليها المنظومة التربوية السورية بالتعاون مع المنظمات الدولية للتحول في التعليم من خلال تعزيز أنشطة المهارات الحياتية وتطوير التعليم الوجداني الاجتماعي والعمل على تعزيز ثقافة سيادة القانون والاهتمام بالصحة العامة وتوفير مستلزماتها للوقاية من الأوبئة والجائحات وضمان سلامة البيئة المدرسية حيث قدمت هذه قدمت هذه الدراسة للجان المنظمة للقمة مع دراسة تضمنت حوارات شبابية حول مستقبل التعليم قامت بها المنظمات الشبابية في سوريا في المدارس والجامعات سيما وأن الفرص المتاحة للشباب في سوريا والعديد من دول العالم النامي غير عادلة وغير متساوية مع باقي المتعلمين من دول الغرب نتيجة عوامل الحرب وانعكاساتها على التعليم والشباب سيدات والسادة لقد لاقت دعوة الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة الموجهة للسيد الرئيس بشار الأسد للمشاركة في قمة التعليم الاهتمام الكبير وعليه نؤكد التزامنا التام في الجمهورية العربية السورية بجميع الأسس التي تدعم التحول في التعليم إيمانا منه ومنا بأنه من واجبنا بناء جيل قادر على النهوض بمجتمعه وتحسين حياة الناس وتجنب الكوارث والحروب والنظر إلى مستقبل العالم نظرة مستدامة وشمولية يسود فيها العدل والسلام والأمان ويتوفر فيها الغذاء والوقود والطاقة لجميع الناس دون استخدام الضغوط السياسية والعقوبات الاقتصادية وسيلة لفرض النفوز العسكري والمالي على الشعوب النامية والفقيرة علينا أن نعطي التجربة السورية في التعليم خلال سنوات الحرب Well, I can see that you were so enraptured and enthralled by those video messages that you've been stunned into silence. Please, a round of applause for those commitments from about 30 or so ministers and national governments building anticipation for the major summit that will take place at the UN General Assembly in September. I hope you've had a good day of interesting engagement, um, bilaterals, multilaterals, uh, action tracks, and that you are ready for the final push. I'm a track and field athlete, now retired. But during my days, I would always say it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you need to keep something in reserve, just in case you have to kick off the bend down the home straight and not be left trailing in the wake of your competitors. So that's where we are at this stage. I'm pleased to introduce this next segment. We're going to hear the perspective of private sector leaders. We're going to hear what transforming education looks like to them. So I'm pleased now to welcome on stage Mr. Simon Summer, co-CEO of the Jacobs or Jacobs Foundation, Jacobs Foundation based in Switzerland, and he is the private sector representative to the SDG4 high-level steering committee. So, welcome and bienvenue Simon Sommer, please give him a round of applause. I hit him with a welcome and a bienvenue because most Swiss people speak both languages. Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Henry. Merci. Good afternoon. Bonjour à toutes et tous. What can you expect from the next 45 minutes? Well, the objective of our session is to bring together various private sector perspectives, voices, to, to evolve our thinking about what we, as a private sector, mean by transforming education and what this should look like. Uh, as Henry said, my name is Simon Sommer. I'm the co-CEO of the Jacobs Foundation, and I'm representing philanthropy and private sector constituencies in the SDG4 High-Level Steering Committee. Our session will capture ideas from the private sector and hopefully start a process of creating a joint vision which will inform the overall transforming education process towards the tests in New York and the overall sustainable development agenda. Without any further ado, may I ask the panel to join me on stage.
So let me start with a few introductions of this panel. First of all, you see the private sector is far more diverse uh, than you might think, right? Nobody in a gray suit, um, so uh, I think that's the first good news. The only person in a suit is the student representative, which I also like um, a lot. So let me, let me start by introducing uh, to my left uh, Ashit Saidiai. He's, she's the founder and the co-CEO of the Global Schools Forum, a network organization working to strengthen global education through supporting non-state organizations in low- and middle-income countries. Um, and those organizations serve children from low-income backgrounds. She has also worked at the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, the UK Department for International Development, the World Bank, and at the American Institutes for Research. Today, she's going to represent uh, the perspective of uh, private or non-state education providers in our group. Next to the left is William Florence, who is the Government Relations Program Lead for uh, EMEA at Google for education in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions. Prior to joining Google, as far as I know, uh, William was in educational technology, the head of uh, international sales and marketing for Blackboard Collaborate, which uh, is a leader in education technology. He's going to provide the perspective of digital education delivery providers. Next, Tina Morni is a senior advisor and education specialist at the International Organization of Employers, the IOE, which hosts the Secretariat of the Employers Group to the International Labour Organization, the ILO, in Geneva. Tina will be speaking from the perspective of employers relying on the skills and workforce needed for future of work. Next, Tara Klovsky is sitting next to me. She's the founder and the CEO of Technovation, which is the world's largest and longest running technology entrepreneurship program for girls. Through Technovation, girls work with industry mentors to develop mobile or AI-based solutions for problems they face in their own communities. Um, Technovation has rigorously tested its model at global scale for more than 60 year, 16 years, if I'm not mistaken, reaching more than 370,000 uh, participants in 120 plus countries. So Tara will be speaking from the perspective of innovating uh, NGOs supporting education systems. And finally, Taha Bawa is the CEO and co-founder of Goodwall, a social enterprise closing the global youth skills gap. Um, the platform supports over 2 million youth in 150 plus countries. Uh, his list of memberships is long. He's a WEF Global Shaper, a Forbes 30 under 30, um, a member of the Young Presidents Organization, and he serves also um, uh, on Generation Unlimited's Global Leadership Council. So Taha will be speaking from the perspective of the future workforce uh, that, that needs the skills uh, to, to thrive over the next decades and centuries. So the first message here, you see quite a diverse private sector, not a single ATM here. Uh, we are just more than money. We really want to participate in this process, and we are ready to do so. And you will hear some inspiring examples um, today. Again, um, the private sector has a key role to play in building uh, a global movement and to be a part uh, of, of this process to drive forces reimagination, re, uh, to reimagine education systems. So how can this look like? Well, let's hear from our panelists. And my first question is basically the same to all of you. And I start with uh, Ashi here. What does transforming education look like to you? And what role should the private sector have, or more concretely, what is the potential unique contribution of the private actors you represent to this transformation process? Thanks so much, Simone. Ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to UNESCO and to TESS Secretariat for convening the session. We are very pleased to see the very important role that the private sector can play is being acknowledged and included on the agenda for the summit. Um, as Simone mentioned, I'm speaking from the perspective of non-state schools. This includes NGO schools as well as low-cost private schools who are already playing a significant role in education systems globally. Non-state schools provide schooling to over 350 million children around the world, including those from uh, the most marginalized backgrounds. To transform education, um, and tackle learning poverty, as we've been talking about over the last few days. Um, we need all hands on deck. Um, we know this is an urgent issue, and we believe that the non-state education sector can play a critical role. 
um, the non-state organizations that we represent at the Global Schools Forum, some of whom are here today in the room, are ready and willing to do whatever we can to support governments in realizing their vision for transforming education. And we're already doing it, as His Excellency Minister Senge highlights in his introduction to the latest Global Education Monitoring Report. There are already financial partnerships between 171, uh, in 171 out of 204 countries. And we stand ready to partner with government to find answers and to do much more. Thanks, Ashti, also for being uh, on time. I like that a lot. That was one uh, hour, uh, one minute, not one hour, one, one minute and 30 seconds. Next, uh, William, let me pass the microphone to you. Basically the same question, representing a slightly larger organization here on stage. <laughs> it is a large organization. Do we have one minute or two? Oh, good. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and an honor to be here uh, to share our thoughts uh, on this important question. I think the last few years have, have kind of uh, shown us everywhere in the world uh, that there's a need to actually transform education. Uh, we've actually seen a number of different shifts taking place over the last couple of years. The first one would be we see knowledge and skill sets people need for economic development will look different uh, than they do today. Uh, speaking firsthand, when I graduated from university, the company that I currently work for, the industry that I work in, didn't exist after tertiary education. So what is it going to be for the kids that are only starting primary education today? We've heard this. We're familiar with that theme. Secondly, the process of learning will become more personal and flexible in terms of how and where and when we learn. We definitely saw that during the most recent crisis that we've seen globally, uh, but this isn't going to go away. Uh, now that people have a taste for learning in different ways and in different paces and in different modalities, I think we're going to continue to see that. And thirdly, I think education ecosystems are going to have to look different particularly the role of teachers is going to have to change. Dr. Basile from the Arizona State University is actually leading uh, an initiative called Education Reimagined, uh, which recognizes, and I think this is common around the world, that there's a teacher shortage. Uh, in fact, this is not new either. Uh, in fact, countries have been trying to address teacher shortages for a couple of decades, and frankly, not much progress has been made to solve that issue. So perhaps what we need to do is reimagine what the ecosystem looks like. I think technology can actually play a role in all three of these areas. We obviously saw how technology played a role during the, during the pandemic. Uh, we haven't really figured out how technology can play a role on reimagining the role of the teacher, though we're starting to see signs of that. Flip classroom is, is kind of an old uh, concept now, but it, it, it became reality during the COVID. Right, so there's a number of different ways that technology can play a role, and we think that we first have to start by recognizing that all these shifts are happening, and they're all happening at once, and then look at how we can apply technology to solve some of these issues. There's already, I mentioned, that kids starting school today, we don't even know what their careers are going to be when they come out of high school or college, but there, the fact is there's already a shortage of skills for the current jobs and in industry. World, Econo World Economic Forum estimates that 50% of people in jobs today are going to have to be reskilled in just the next couple of years. So I'll give you an example of how technology is helping to address that. The, not to promote my company, but the Google Career Certificates were launched in recent years using technology, using online technology to make this kind of content, make this, these, these courses and certificates available to anybody anywhere in the world. So you can quickly become skilled in new areas without even having to have prior experience in those areas so that you can become relevant to industry today. So that's one example that we see around the world of how technology can, uh, can play an important role. Thank you. Thank you, William. And that's a perfect segue to Tina. Uh, the organizations you represent need to hire uh, their future workforce today. They also know that the skills that you know, people bring to, this, to, to, to their jobs won't be the same they need in 20, 40 years. So what is it that, that the uh, employers actually uh, want and try to do in this field? 
Thank you, thank you, Simon, and thank you for inviting the IOE. Uh, for those who don't who don't know us, um, we represent the views of more than 50 million companies around the world in more than 140 countries through employee organizations um, in developed and developing countries, and representing not just large enterprises but also small medium enterprises. For us, the our members have been saying that you know it's really really difficult, and that's very much linked to what William was saying. This, we have a, a serious skills shortage issue. We're finding skills matches is taking place in many countries, and it's not a secret that policymakers are aware of the challenges that we face when it comes to meeting the labor market needs. But the problem is, how do we do that? And of course, we would like to promote um, as much as possible public-private cooperation, and there are so many examples at the national level that could help with that. But we're seeing, you know, even when we did a survey before the pandemic, um, countries, no matter what pay grade, no matter what sector, are facing these skill shortages. For example, in China, 47% of employers do not, cannot find the right people to do the job. In Bolivia, 60%. In South Africa, it's as high as 51%. In Malaysia, it's as high as 63%. So, looking, no matter where you go, there's a skill shortage everywhere. And we need the government's assistance on, in this regard because that would help address the skills mismatches, the youth unemployment, um, the gender gaps, et cetera. And 78% of them actually welcome being invited at the table um, when it comes to strengthening the um, education policies. So for us, um, uh, and I end here, uh, it's, it's just to, to say that skills anticipation is really important because we can never really um, estimate what kind of skills that we need um, with the new um, future of work, demographic changes and you know climate change, et cetera. But we need to help um, anticipate what kind of skills that we can get, and that's when the labor market information needs to be as informed and as updated as possible. And this is where employer and business membership organizations can play a key role at the national level. Thank you, Tina. Tara, share with us your journey and your experiences in actually helping young people developing these skills. Thank you, and thank you to all for your patience for waiting for this panel. Um, so, in my view, um, what transformative education looks like, it has three features. Number one, asking young people what they want to do and uh, what they care about, especially girls, because they are usually left out of the conversation. And uh, not just giving them foundational skills, but giving them the skills to use the cutting edge tools, technology tools that we have, um, and giving them an entrepreneurial mindset. So. All of this sort of builds an incredible sense of purpose and agency, which is what we all need as we tackle such big problems like climate change um, and so on. And I'll give you an example. So Technovation Girls, there's a team in Rwanda who created a mobile app to help manage libraries. And I was just so impressed that here is a small, a young group of girls who is taking on an infrastructural problem that typically the government should be tackling, but they didn't wait around to wait for others to come. So I think that is an incredible example of uh, fixing problems, but also empowering our future. Number two, it would be to um, recognize that most of learning actually takes place outside of the formal school system. And industry professionals, millions of them, as well as university students can be incredible mentors. Mentors who can be role models for students, helping them together learn, build skills, um, and be like a lifelong, lifelong layer of support for um, especially underserved communities. And lastly, I would think about different ways of funding initiatives. Um, I, we have seen that the industry can have a very um, synergistic partnership with a nonprofit where if you think about uh, supporting a technology education nonprofit like us, you are actually building your pipeline, your workforce, a very diverse, innovative workforce. And the costs of funding uh, education systems in underserved communities may actually be the same cost of your talent acquisition. Um, and in addition, you're building like your brand, you're providing purpose to your employees, so you have multi-layered uh, value back to the industry, which actually has monetary value. So I think that instead of just talking about CSR, I think we can have um, more synergistic funding streams in addition, of course, to employees, skill-based, skill things like that, but that results in a sustainable uh, partnership over time.
you, Tara. And I'll pass the microphone to Taha. Just one other letter in here. Also, uh, someone who didn't wait for others to do things, right? You just started it yourself. Um, share your experience and your definition of transforming education with us. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for having us. Um, I, I reiterate, I really agree with a lot that's been said here. Uh, and, and yes, we did, uh, well, my brother came up with the idea, I kind of followed him. Um, in terms of uh, transforming education, I, I view it as uh, meeting the needs of the people we are serving, and, and that's the learners. And one of their needs is being able to connect to a dignified livelihood, um, leveraging the education that they had or have. Um, and we need to leverage the resources that we have at our disposal, technology, capital, partnerships, and essentially the feedback from youth as quickly as possible to be able to, to serve them uh, appropriately. In terms of the uh, private sector's engagement, I see a few ways. Uh, firstly, this is